Disclaimer, this isn't a video teaching you how to get the inverse trig derivatives. This is a video on how to remember the inverse trig derivatives. This is not the only shortcut. This is the way we remember the formulas. If you're not in calculus, your discretion is advised. All right, guys, you guys are gonna need to stick with me for this part because this video is gonna be really goofy. You're gonna think the shortcut is weird, but trust me, it's so goofy that you won't be able to forget it and it'll help you actually remember all of the inverse trig functions. There it is. There it is. <laughs> so like the other shortcuts, you do need to memorize a few things. And for this one, you need to memorize the trig function order. The order is the sine inverse of one u tangent inverse of u and the secant inverse of u. This is the order that all of the functions go through for the shortcut and if you can't if you mess up the order that it's set right here you're going to mess up which ones match which derivatives match up to each function. Okay, to start off, we have the sine inverse of u. All of the formulas will always follow the same structure. We have 1 over something times du over dx. Now this is the always the basic structure to all of the derivative formulas. Some will have a negative one, but we'll get into that later. Thank you, Joel. To move on, we have to, to start off at the bottom of the sign, it is root 1 minus u squared. It will always be this for sign, and you always have to remember this. This is the starting point for all of the ways for the goofy shortcut. If you memorize the 1 minus u squared with the root, you'll be able to memorize the shortcut a lot easier. So here it is, the sine inverse of u derivative formula. All right, so now moving on to the tangent inverse of u. This is where things get really goofy, and you guys are just going to stick with me, but trust me, once you get it down, you will never forget this. Now, the way to remember how to do the tangent inverse of u is you take the sine formula, you take the root of the sine formula, and you move it to cross with the negative sign to make it a plus. And it sounds goofy, but that's actually how the formula is. If, you, if I go through it right now, if you take the root, get rid of it, you move it over and you cross it with the negative sign, you make it into a positive sign, and you now have the tangent inverse derivative formula 1 over 1 plus u squared. It's a weird way to remember it, but trust me, that is the easiest way to remember it from going that from going to sine to tangent. Alright, for the last part of the shortcut, and if you thought the last one was weird, this is where everything gets pretty crazy. Now what you do to remember the secant inverse of u is you take the root that you moved in to the positive sign flip it back out, and because you flipped it out, think of it like it jumbles up the inside of the root and flips these two, and then you actually just have to add the absolute value of u to the outside. So if I go through it right now, you get rid, you take out the root, so it becomes a root again. It becomes a negative because you took the root out of the positive sign. It, because you did that, it flips around the numbers, so then you now have u squared minus one the better two for you. Uh, and then you just add the absolute value of u on the outside. And there you go, the formula for secant inverse of u. A good way to just remember that this is the secant inverse of u is that it has the absolute value in front. No other uh, arc or uh, derivative for the inverse of trig functions will have an absolute value on the bottom, except secant and another one that we will get to right now. Thanks, Joel. Alright, so it's a lot more easier to visualize this shortcut when you have it all in front of you like this. So, like I said, this starts off with sine, tangent, secant. Start off with the root on the outside. You take the root, flip it into it to make it a positive sign, and when you pull the root back out, it flips the numbers around, and of course, because it's secant, you add the uh, absolute value of u. Now, it's easier to visualize it like this. If you know these three, you're good. But another way to know it is to write it out another chart. If you saw the other shortcut, this is just another chart where you write it as sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. So you write it in the same way as the derivative of the regular trig functions, but instead of going from top to bottom, you go from left to right, top to bottom. So that's what you do. And the only difference between the left side and the right side is that it's negative. It's negative 1 over a different thing on the bottom. So 
sine and cosine are the same since they're right next to each other. Same with tangent and cotangent, and same with secant and cosecant. So the derivative of arc cosine will be negative 1 over root 1 minus u squared. The derivative of arc cotangent will be negative 1 over 1 plus u squared. So the same thing, the root, you move it down, make it a, pu a plus sign, and then to go to cosecant, it's negative 1, where the same thing as that one, you put the absolute value u, take the root out, and it flips the number, so it's 1 minus u squared. So that is another way of memorizing the derivatives for the inverse of trick functions. So that, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. I know it's really confusing, but trust me, it helped this guy out. It helped. I erased the dot and stuff. <laughs> this will always be here. <laughs>